Recording. Um, well, this is the color checker passport. The first thing I really like about it is that it's in this plastic case. I don't want my. <laughs> it's <laughs> too a, late. First thing I really like about it is the plastic case, so it keeps protected. Um, when you unfold it, you get a just a white patch, but you also get the classic color checker patch, which is this part. Then you get this part, which is very cool, and we'll just show you how to use that later. Um, but um, so, not only does the case protect it, but it also makes a nice little thing so it can stand it up on the subject. So here's the color checker that we all know and love, the classic color checker. It's a little smaller, but um, I've gone ahead and clicked on my, my middle gray to neutralize it. But uh, the new feature is these uh, tinted patches, and by clicking on there, it neutralizes based on there and gives your image a slight uh, and predictable color shift. So this is the what they call the portrait line and these are for landscapes. Of course you can use them for whatever you want if you like the effect. But uh, just a nice, this line especially, I like this patch right here. It's a nice little warming effect for a portrait. Um, and um, and then we can take a look at the software uh, that uses the classic color checker to profile the profile uh, the camera. So this is the color checker passport uh, software, and this is what you use to uh, um, build up build up a profile uh, that you can apply in um, Adobe Camera Raw camera a, a camera profile. It's based on the DNG profile editor. Uh, however. Um, once you have the profile, you can use it on any raw file. Uh, you, you've got to convert a file to a DNG in order to build the profile. So I have a DNG file here. It has the, uh, it has the target in it. So I just drag it and drop it into the window. You can see it's loading the image. It's automatically going to try to find the color checker, and it's going to align it. Um, so it should do a fine job. Um, Wait, 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 wait. There we go. There's my profile, and uh, you can see it's located all the patches. Okay, we've got the profile, or we've got the target all loaded, and um, it once it's aligned, I mean, if it doesn't align properly, you can move these little suckers around, but uh, generally don't have to. And just uh, hit create profile and it'll ask you to name it and uh... And it'll go off on its merry little way building building the profile it's as simple as that really um, it it loads it automatically into the folder that photoshop needs to have it in to to be able to see and use so we'll just wait for it to finish and it's done All right, so now I've just opened up a opened up a, a raw file uh, of the color checker in Adobe Camera Raw. And now you just go to Color Calibration, and Camera Profile, which normally goes to Adobe Standard or it may default to whatever camera you have, and then you click it and uh, you see these various presets. But this is the one that I just built, EPL D5000. I shot it at EP Levines. Thank you, Mike. Um, shot it with a D5000 with a Pro Photo Pack, so I just invoke the profile there, and uh, it makes my correction. So um, you know, it really it, it, it's a little more seamless in uh, Lightroom because you can just make the profile right out of Lightroom and um, or right within Lightroom and apply it. But um, you know, it's fast and easy enough to where you can simply. Um, you know, make a correction, make a profile, uh, at, literally at the drop of a hat, which is what you need to do with a camera profile because the parameters change so much. I mean, you put a different light light source in there, you've got to build another profile. But look right in here. Look at this area right here when I switch from Adobe Standard to uh, my profile. Isn't that interesting? That's much, much better mapping of those colors.